it's a pleasure to come here because uh, I, I see all these kind of events also uh, a learning experience for myself. So we are all learning here something about quality, quality assurance and m might take something home with us. I have noticed that, that though we have been working with quality assurance uh, over 25 years in, in Finland, we still have to learn a lot and we have a lot to develop. And, and these kind of discussions may raise uh, questions that we didn't think for ourselves at all back home. So this is very, very good opportunity. First, a few words about the Finnish vocational education, which was, I, I, I would say, 25 years of very um, maybe old-fashioned school-based initial vocational education. But we have been developing it since very much, and uh, it's now a very popular uh, choice for young people who are leaving uh, basic education, almost half of the students from basic education, they apply to vocational education. And one of the reasons I think that is uh, that we opened the higher education pathway at the end of 1990s to, to all wet students. And this made vocational education popular, not only to the students, but also to the parents because it's quite important that, the, that the, the parents are also thinking that their children are choosing a good way for, for their studies. So uh, we have been in this very successful. And um, the other thing that we did was that we added uh, work-based learning to all VET programs. So all VET students uh, go to learn to working places and, and this is one of the reasons why I think it's very motivating for young people to see actually how, how the profession they are learning is done at the workplace. And uh, this has lead, led also to re-learning uh, for teachers because before teachers t taught at the school and they didn't always have a good contact with the working life. After this, when we added work-based learning to all students, also, to, also the teachers have to learn to work, cooperate with the working places and plan their teaching also at school to align the demands of the working life. So this is work-based learning also for the teachers, which is, which is very important to do it as part of their work. And this is a way that we have also been thinking about quality assurance. We try not to make it something extra, something fancy, which all should be done, but, but it's not part of the work. So we try to make it part of the daily work of the teachers and, and the trainers at the working places. So it's something that they naturally do, and it's not something that they have to do something extra work. So this is this is very important also because uh, we had quite a discussions when we started this uh, quality assurance uh, discussions in Finland. Why should we do that? Uh, it's extra for work for the teachers and there's no uh, benefit, beneficial uh, aspects of it to the teacher. But nowadays when it's um, more practical, more, more uh, part of the work, it's, um, I think it's uh, much more easier to, at the government level to look at the quality assurance because people are very motivating, motivated to do this. And um, the title of, of my presentation is Aligning National Quality Assurance Systems with the ECAVET. In, in Finland, it, it didn't went quite this way because we had already a quality assurance um, recommendation for vet providers before ECAVET. And uh, it was a um, kind of um, list of ingredients of uh, quality assurance. Not to, we didn't want to say what to do, but we uh, wanted to, to guide what things should be included in, in quality assurance. And uh, we still have the idea that uh, all vet providers can 
choose the way they, they assure the quality of the training and teaching in which in the way that it suits to their their um, tradition of arranging the education. So there are very many different ways of quality assurance in different uh, schools in Finland. There are uh, common targets. So the na national steering of vocational education sets the targets for vocational education. And the these are also the targets for the quality assurance. So we try to make them few and very clear that it's easy to understand what are the goals that the government mo wants to go. And, and then it's, uh, it's um, decided at the local level how in practice they do it. So this is, um, is a thing that we, we think that we uh, trust the education providers that they can do this. But it's, it's not trust based on nothing. So we also, they have to report what they are doing. We have a regulation of, on many, many things, but we don't have any in inspection as such. But of course, we have the opportunity to go to a provider if we see that things are not going as, as planned. But it's not a regular thing to do. And uh, because we had this, uh, our own recommendation with me re renewed in 2008, which is open for all methods of quality assurance, with, uh, we have always answered to ECAVET uh, questions about uh, is it aligned to ECAVET that yes, it is. And we think it is in the way we interpret the, the recommendation. In, in the legislation in Finland, we don't have so much about quality assurance. We say there only that uh, the ed education providers sh uh, should evaluate their performance and effectiveness. And how they do it, it's up to them to, do, to, to decide. A part of that, they have to participate in external evaluations and uh, publicize their results. This is, I think, that part which is working not so well, because publicizing the results is something that uh, needs to be done in a way that the public really understands what the results mean. And this is a very demanding process. I come back to this a bit later. But that, as I said, the, the methods are free, free to choose for the providers. But then we have this national external evaluation. Uh, we do evaluation of learning outcomes. And um, this has been discussed a lot at, at the European level because there are different ways of evaluation of learning out outcomes. And we do it through the, um, because we have the, uh, the assessment of students is happening in three part system at the working places. So we use the results which are coming from there to assess the, the national learning outcomes. And uh, this is also a way to, to make the, the, the education providers and, and the working places work closely together. Then we have thematic uh, evaluations. For instance, dropout was one of the topics we, we had uh, very recently. And uh, through this evaluation, we are uh, collecting evidence for development. We are not ranking the schools. We are not telling that this school is better than the other one because they are different. So it's very um, useful not to have a ranking, but to, to guide the edu education providers to develop their own activities. And we have an, a national ex external evaluator, the Finnish Education Evaluation Center, which besides have very good uh, website. So if you want to see what they are doing, you can go to the website. And, and uh, we try to, to get evidence from these um, evaluations to decide what, what things we want to develop in, in our vocational system. So we don't have any standards 
uh, no frameworks, so it's a <laughs> kind of free choice for the education providers to, to, to choose what to do. But uh, one thing that we, we have uh, tried to develop is the, the, the training of teachers, because they are really doing the, the daily work at the schools, and, and we have highly trained teachers who, who have um, mostly master's degrees, so they really, don't, they really can develop their own, own work. But then we think also that the funding is one way to, to uh, make the providers to, to act in an um, effective way and to, to re try to re reach the goals that the government has set. And, and the starting point for this is that we have uh, licensed or registered vet providers, and it's the Ministry of Education and Culture which gives the, the license. And at that point, we, we evaluate the, the provider and see if they are fit to, to organize vocational education. And just, the license is not easy to get, so the, the standards here are high, and they are they are set in the legislation, but in a very uh, general level. Though we say only that they have to have the, the means of organizing vocational education and not put any, any very detailed um, preconditions for, for, for them. But when we give the license, at the same time, we give uh, the, the providers also a promise of funding. But we set, set limits for the funding, so the, the, in the license we say how many students they can have and on, on what fields. So it's a um, restricted promise of funding. And based on, on the fields and the number of students, the, the Education pro by providers get their funding. We have this uh, national unit prices system where we evaluate. Uh, we have a, a data collection of, of the costs of different fields, so we know how much we should uh, pay for what. And then uh, the education provider gets gets a lump sum of funding. So we don't say how they should use the funding. They can decide it among themselves. So there are no e e earmarks. But when we set the targets, we of course try to make it in a way that they, they use the money in a wise way. And, and now we have had some 10 years of performance-based funding system it's only 3% of the total funding of the education providers, so it's not much uh, uh, if you see the amount, but it's, uh, it, in, in the Finnish system, this has been working quite well because we are looking at uh, the performance of the, the education providers, the outcomes of the students, which are completion of co qualification, uh, further studies, and employment rate. Uh, and then we are looking at teaching staff's formal qualification level and, and the education provider's investment in developing staff's professional competence. And uh, the outcome, <coughs> outcomes, because we can collect uh, the information on qualifications, on employment rate, uh, and the, the students who are going into further education, from di different uh, statistics that are collected f from, uh, from the whole country. So we don't have to build any new system for this. We have this person-based uh, statistic statistical system, which is quite easy to collect this kind of information. And this uh, performance inde index is also publicized in the web page of National Board of Education. And when it's publicized, the, the education providers are very keen to see where they are with their peers, because there are different kinds of uh, uh, providers. They want to see where they are compared to, to their peers. And, and this um, 
this is not ranking, but it's some kind of uh, self-evaluation of their actions. And then we have a small um, uh, part of uh, performance-based funding, which is uh, on application and its quality prices, which is a very small amount of money. But uh, every year we get some uh, quite a lot of applications on the price because it's really based on on how they do their quality assurance. So they apply, and based on the applications, there are visits to the school. It's it's real evaluation. So you have to have a very very well working. Um, quality system if you get the price. The money is not so much, but the uh, reputation might be very, very uh, meaningful for the, the education providers. And um, this is something that we are now in the process of developing. So this was the starting point. We have tried this for many years now, and, and we have some experience and because we are also re reforming the whole VET system in the coming years, this is one, something that we, we have to look on. But this is um, a way to encourage vocational education providers to make their quality assurance better and, and also the results of the education better. One part of, of this is uh, which we don't have it yet is the, the feedback from the students and from the working life. And we are now trying to find out how, how we could add this part to the system because it's also important to, to have the, the students' view to the quality assurance and the results of, of the education provider. And, and a few words about quality management and steering. So as I said before, the government sets targets and guidelines for the, for the de development of vocational education and, and of course the whole, vet system, or whole education system. So we, we had earlier a document, four-year document on, on more detailed uh, details that the government said, but the, this government decided not to have it. And, and uh, at least in the Ministry of Education, we have been a little bit missing the document because there were more detailed uh, things and, and maybe the education provided, they read it very thoroughly la too, uh, true and, and, and m tried to, to act as mentioned in there. And um, we made a quality strategy in 2010, so it's a bit outdated already, but we have decided that uh, we make the next one after the renovation of the vocational system so we can see what are the really the targets for the 2020. And uh, as I mentioned also, the re quality recommendation for vocational education tra training is from uh, 2008, and it's an uh, ingredient list, still not a recipe to, to tell what they should do. But what is interesting, uh, because in the uh, ECAVET recommendation there was um, uh, a target that all wet providers should have a working uh, quality assurance system in, in 2015. And, and uh, because we are Finns, we took this very seriously. <laughs> and, and then we thought that what, what could we do? And then we decided to have a self-evaluation of all wet providers of their quality assurance systems. And we did that last year. We had a rehearsal 2014. And... Um, it, it was really interesting because we, first we have a group, working group which made the criteria for the self-assessment. Then we had these quality assurance networks which were rehearsing to use the criteria and then we have some rounds to improve it. And uh, when we have the, the preliminary evaluation 2014, we find, found out that uh, the criteria were working quite well. So, because we did also an external evaluation on, on that, that stage. So last, 
Yeah, we did it in in real, and almost all education providers answered. The answering rate was something like 95%, and 70% of those providers had a working system. Some uh, not so good, but, but anyway, quite a working system. And one of the, the outcomes from this was that uh, the, the weakest point of quality assurance system was the, the improvement part. So planning and doing and, and uh, collecting information, it went quite well. But when you have to draw the, the, uh, the, all the gathered data together and decide how to improve your system, that was the weakest part. And now we are trying in the networks to, to find ways to improving. So this was, uh, I think this was a um, very good learning experience also for the, for the uh, web providers because when we are renovating the system, we are also trying to, to, uh, to have fewer providers. So now the criteria for, for the, the license will be tougher mm -hmm. in the future, and now they are somehow they are knowing what they should do, and maybe they find find uh, uh, ways to merge with other other providers because the, there are there will be twenty percent less money, so the financial situation also will be very severe. So this was interesting. Uh, uh, rehearsal and and we are planning to continue it so the next self evaluation might be in 2019 it has not been decided by the minister yet but we have uh, we have been uh, having been discussing about that and then now we have outcome based uh, vet qualifications so we are really in an outcome-based system where we don't assess the time spent in education, but only the results uh, gained by the students. And uh, we, ha we have also the criteria of student assessment in the uh, basis for the qualifications. So there is a criteria for, for assessment at the national level, at the local level, at the student level, so we can see if the students really have reached the, the goals of the qualifications. And it's, this is uh, assessed by, by teachers, but also the, the, the trainers from, from the working places together. And, and we also uh, recommend that the students do their self-assessment at the same time, so th they can also personally see what they should do better. And uh, this is something that um, we are now also thinking as part of the, the quality assurance system because uh, the, the quality assurance of the work of the teachers is quite a um, difficult thing, thing to discuss. The teacher unions are very keen on saying that, well, you have no say in the classroom. But we have been thinking that because we have now this outcome-based system that we should in the future find a way also to assess the, the performance of the teachers in some way. What it will be, we don't know, but this is on, on the table. And, and uh, in Finland, we have the benefit that the, the, the social partners are very much involved in all this quality assurance work. So they are, they are preparing the, the qualifications, they are at the working places, uh, uh, planning the, the education, and, and also they are in with the, the qualifi qualification requirements. And they are also part of the, the system of uh, assessing the skills need of, of the future, so they are very active part of, of the system. And I, I think that uh, there should, this is also something that we should look at in the future. Should we give more, more um, power for the, the working life to decide or should we continue on the line that we have chosen? But this is a very long um, 
in the end, I could say that uh, when you are developing quality assurance, you are at the same time uh, developing the whole VET system and the education system, and it doesn't happen overnight. So we have been working this since 1996, 1995, so we have this 30 years celebration about this coming, and, and uh, it's very important that uh, that uh, you gather information on, on how, how it's going, because we have changed some things on the way, because we have noticed some things work and some don't, and, and you can't see it very quickly. So if you, because uh, the EU is always asking us yearly what, what we have gained in education or in, in quality assurance, that's quite a short time to really see any visible results. And that's why it's very important that you, in your country, know where you are going and what you really want to do. So we have chosen from EGAVET what we see fit for our system. And for instance, these indicators, many of them are not fitting in our system, though we have this very good data collection system. For instance, the teacher's indicator is not very relevant for us. And then there is this indicator of uh, using, using um, how can you use what you have learned at the workplace? It's not indicator. I love to say this because I was in the indicator working group and I didn't want like that indicator at all because it doesn't. Re it's a uh, research which takes time, and you really uh, at the end know why they are d doing well or not at the working place. But thank you very much for your interest, and I am prepared to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you.